I think it was Yo Yo Ma that said it takes the third generation to be able to have the luxury of being an artist because the first gen is trying to survive and the second gen is trying to get educated. So then that way the third gen could pursue their passions. And I'm like, no, I want to pursue my passions now. Let me tell you about Laos. Get out of here, babe. My family came here when I was three. Laos is in Southeast Asia, and it is actually a landlocked country. Mox, that's boring. I want to be edgy. Mate, this is a research university. These people want facts. I started writing when I was maybe eight or nine years old. Galastic Book Fair Day is one of my favorite days ever. But when I went to these bookshelves, like libraries and book fairs, I didn't see books that had little Asian girls that looked like me. In the sixth grade, we had this assignment to write about a family tradition. So I wrote about going to cucumber fields and picking cucumbers with my parents. Like for me, that was something we did as a family ever since I was four. My English teacher sat me down and she said, this is one of my favorite essays that I've read. You just seem so honest. And then she's like, your story matters. And that was something that really hit home with me. She made me want to keep writing. All right, May Mooks, we're going to take it from the top of the show. So in 2014, my best friend and I, Mei Li Yang, decided that we wanted to write the Hmong Lao friendship play or a Lao Hmong friendship play because she's Hmong and I'm Lao. Our communities don't often communicate. We don't often have events together. And our communities share language and food. We share our history. And we felt that we wanted to bring our communities together. We were like, oh, this is so perfect. They're going to love it. And so we talked about how we met as as young people. Sometimes when people look at us, we're a bit of an odd couple. They don't, mm -hmm. they don't think we go together. No. Yeah, uh, because I'm short and chubby. Uh-huh, and I'm tall and thin. And if we stand next to each other like this, we look like the number 10. <laughs> and we talked about our struggles with uh, growing up acclimating. We had to adapt, right? And so what they did was they actually came up with refugee life hacks. You pretend that English is your second or third or fourth or fifth language. You can get extensions on papers very easily. <laughs> that play, it did bring our communities together in some way. We were sitting in the audience together and we were laughing together. We were in on the jokes together. My parents would tell me people who were artists and intellectuals were silenced during the war because they were influential or they were able to inspire people. To be an artist right now and to be someone from my community is an act of rebelling. And in my father's Tandy Zuzu truck, we drove to Hudson. Mom buys lottery tickets for her, bags of Funyuns and giant Slurpees for us. My brother Bit likes the blue ones. They stain his tongue so good he makes a point to show me every time. I started writing my poem when everything was everything in 2010 or 2011. Be the first to line up in front of the food truck before its door slams up, thundering over the murmuring. Everyone will wonder if they'll get a bag of frozen chicken this time or angel food cake two days past the expiration date. I go around and exchange boxes of cheese for rice with anyone who doesn't look like me. We have the first copy of all of the colored pages. Oh my gosh, I love it. And now it's gonna be an illustrated kids' book. This is the one that I sent to my family because they were all like, we immediately understand uh -huh. the need to collect as many types of rice as possible. <laughs> I wanted to have something for my son, and I wanted to have something that my mom and my aunties and my uncles can hold and look at and feel that I was honoring them. Corey, it, this just makes me so happy. And maybe someday it'll be the Scholastic Book Fair. <laughs>
I like to let other people know that they're not alone, that the dreams that they have for themselves is something that's shared too. So I have this performance that I do called The Shaman Warrior. I am a rogue blesser. It's powerful for me to hear what other people want for themselves. It makes me work harder to work towards the things I want in my life. I think a lot of the work that I do is also about imagining what could be for our community. It's important to know where we're from and to make sure that those things are preserved. But it's also important to imagine where we could be as a community 40 years from now. I grew up listening to stories told to me. I just want to keep that going. And I feel like I could inspire another group of people from my community to be artists too and storytellers too.